welcome to the auditing mock test for test three, which means we are covering the evaluation of misstatements, going concern, and the audit opinion. So, your reading time, 12 minutes, guys. You should have been able to get through this in the 12 minutes, but as we standardly say, if you didn't, stop after 12 minutes and go and see what is required of you. Okay, as soon as you have the opportunity to see what is being tested, you should be looking at that so that when you back into the scenario, you're trying to find the answers, not just trying to read through and make notes of what you're seeing. All right, so you are a trainee accountant, so to note your experience, you shouldn't be dealing with very high level topics or sections being a trainee. At CA Auditors Inc., here and referred to as CAA, a medium-sized firm of registered auditors. So medium-sized, we expect medium-sized or small clients. CAA has been the auditors of Hair Care PTY Limited. So PTY being private, here and referred to as Hair Care for the past three years. So it's not a new engagement. We have been the auditors for three years. We know the client, we've got experience with the client. So from a pre-engagement perspective, we're looking at changes in the auditors, in the client, in determining whether to accept the current engagement. This is your first audit engagement. Haircare operates in the personal service industry. So now we understand the industry that this client is in and therefore there will be additional industry regulations offering a range of hair-related services, such as hair cutting, coloring and styling, as well as facial hair grooming. Hair Care also retails hair and personal grooming products, such as shampoos, conditioners, scissors, and razors, to name a few. So we can see that they are in service and retail. It is the 25th of May, 2020. And the audit team is in the process of finalizing the audit for the year ended 31 March 2020. So year end, very important. The audit has taken a lot longer than expected as a result of South Africa's nationwide lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, this was coming up, so might as well include it now. Luckily, Haircare has an automated accounting system and all supporting documents are kept electronically so the audit team have been able to perform the audit remotely. So they've got a computer information system which means you've got a risk at the financial statement level because it's a computer information system. What it also now means is that we can use CATS if we have compatible software. Um, we've been able to take on the audit so that's, that's important. Um, from this point, guys, I would just note, because of this COVID-19, if there's no further mention, I would just put a risk at the financial statement level. Is there a going concern issue because of this pandemic? We'll have to read on. Impacts of COVID-19. Hecke was said to have its best financial year since incorporation until COVID-19 hit South Africa on the 5th of March 2020 and sales in March steadily declined as customers cancelled orders and appointments in order to self-isolate as instructed by government. So, sales in March declined, so we've got assertion level risk with regards to our occurrence, potentially they're going to record fictitious revenue to not show this decline of revenue due to this COVID. What I now also want to put down is my risk at the financial statement level because of this COVID resulting in a decline in revenue, which could then affect their growing concern. On the 26th of March 2020, South Africa was put into lockdown for 21 days and hair care recorded no further sales from this date in their 2020 financial period. So from the 26th of March, there were no sales. There was a steady decline from the 5th into a point of nothing. Okay. 
Hair care management were concerned for their business's future, however their conservative approach to business in the early years meant that they had sufficient reserves to make it through the 21 days without any income. So once again here, this brings information about the going concern. They can cope with 21 days. On the 9th of April 2020, so this is post year end, the South African president announced the lockdown would be extended for a further two weeks and thereafter the lockdown would be gradually lifted to allow the economy to open. So up here we see going concern, no issue for 21 days, but now it's gone for another 14, which now means there is going to be a potential threat. So now I'm going to put a cross there to say, question mark cross, these additional could affect them. The personal service industry was highlighted as low priority and therefore it was likely that hair care would not commence trading for at least two months. So definite 14 days, two months, this is going to be a big concern whether they'll be able to continue if there's no trading for two months. It was on the back of this announcement that management reassessed their initial going concern assessment and at this point decided to enter into voluntary business rescue proceedings. Okay, so now we can see they are trying to have a plan to be able to continue. And this now shows me that there is big concerns with the going concern. Following working papers have been prepared by the audit team. Audit findings A4, press release G2. So here's my working paper. It's been prepared and reviewed post year end. Audit findings. Final materiality has been set at 220,000 rand. So I always highlight that here so I know. Following audit findings have been highlighted for discussion. Vouchers. In March 2020, with the lockdown imminent, management decided to market vouchers for services and supplies redeemable when hair care reopens in the next financial period. So these risks and rewards will transfer in the next period. So I would put a risk at the assertion level with regards to revenue and cutoff or occurrence if they recorded in the current period. This meant that there would be cash flow to assist with staff salaries during lockdown. Vouchers to the value of 255,000 were recognized in revenue and bank during March 2020. So I picked up the risk initially, now I can see that there is a misstatement because they have recognized revenue instead of income received in advance. Okay, so I've got a misstatement. I've got my value. So important to note that this does exceed final materiality. Consumables, 50,000 worth of fraudulent transactions. So seen as there's fraudulent transactions, there's potential reportable irregularity, which we're only getting to later, but I see there's fraud. We identified in the sample of 750 transactions selected for testing. The total value of consumables in the financial statements amounts to 3.42 million. So I can see here I've got a misstatement of those 50 fraudulent transactions, but they were in a sample. And therefore, I need to extrapolate to potentially identify if there are more in the population. I just want to also make a note here, I've said RR, there's potential risk with regards to uh, management integrity. If management are involved, therefore multiple balances or transactions could have fraud in them.
Allowance for credit losses. The allowance for credit losses has been estimated at 202. So once again, I've got here assertion level risk with regards to the valuation because it is an estimate. Okay, and so management bias could be involved in determining that amount. Management applied the same methods and assumptions as the previous period in determining this allowance. Now, what I need to make a note here is that there has been a significant change from the prior year in this COVID-19. And therefore, previous methods are not going to be reliable or reasonable. Trade receivables at 31 March 2020 reflected in the financial statements is 3 million. On 5 April 2020, so once again post year end, the government released statistics on the effects of COVID-19 on each industry. Government statistics show that 15% of customers in the personal service industry will not be able to settle their debts. So this is probably a better method for the allowance. And so I'm going to have to take that 3 million times it by the 15% to see what my allowance for credit losses should be. Working paper G2, press release. The following summarizes the details of the press release held by hair care management on May the 5th, 2020. So once again, post year end. On the 26th of March, 2020, hair care unlawfully opened the salon to service a client. So in the current year, they unlawfully This was in contravention with the lockdown rules as announced by the South African president. The salon manager was arrested and the company was charged with unlawful conduct. Okay, so unlawful, I really can see that there will be implications because of this. I'm now also going to put a risk at the financial statement level for management integrity if they are acting unlawfully. I'm also going to now put a reportable irregularity as a question mark. On the 5th of May, the court ruled in favour of the law and hair care has been given a 5 million fine for operating during lockdown. So post year end, there was a ruling. 5 million is the amount. Hair care has been advised that if the fine is not settled, their license to operate will be revoked. So we have got a post-reporting date event. With conditions present at year end. Let's go and have a look at the required. 